Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Trevor here, joined by Thomas. Uh, this is this is an individual review, um, not not on Oscar buzz, of Robert Eggers' new film, The Northman. Robert Eggers is back. Not that he went anywhere to nice. reference another movie that came out this weekend that, that wasn't as good. The Amber Void of Massive Talent review for that coming soon. Plug, plug, plug. But The Northman uh, was pretty good. It was like r- really, r- really pretty good. Yeah, um, yeah, really pretty good. <laughs> really pretty good it is definitely the most articulate way I can say that. Um, Thomas, uh, you may or may not have this at a particular spot on your um, on your 2022 rank list. So I will. I do. Yes. I will let you get yes. started with this. I mean, you say that like you've seen a lot more films than I have this year already. So uh, it, it's less of an achievement, but it is currently my number one of uh the year i do keep jumping back and forth between this and the batman i do think they are both great films um and yeah to give my sort of overall thoughts about this it wasn't one that clicked with me immediately i'll say right out of the theater i was like yeah i don't know don't know some elements i didn't quite love but there were parts of it i really enjoy and then the more i thought about it the more i've just loved it the more like elements i've i've found to really just be passionate about with this film because there is a lot in this film it's quite a heavy film um uh, it's really not exactly light uh, if you if you're going to see this a lot of people slap this uh the label of the most accessible eggers film onto this film um i don't know if yeah. i completely buy that like yes it is more accessible more. i guess i'd say i don't know like none of eggers's films are accessible put it that way and yeah you yeah. are watching this you can tell it's a pseudo film like it's got the budget yeah. it's all there on display but thankfully, none of like Eggers' directorial style was taken by that or tampered by it. Uh, it still very, very much feels like an Eggers film, which was exactly why I wanted to go into this. Like, yeah. uh, you can tell for every fight scene, uh, every just moment, every line of dialogue, the amount was just research that went into this film. And mm-hmm. that is one thing I completely just adore about this film. I love it when go that extra mile to make you immerse into this world. And like he did it with The Lighthouse. He did it to an extent with The Witch. Um, obviously, it's his first feature, so like there were still some things that were not quite right about that film. But he just he takes it to another level here. Like as I said, every fight scene, every moment, every line of dialogue, every character feels authentic, and you can tell just the craft that went into this film. Like all the elements that you talk about, technically, cinematography, production design, score, all of that kind of thing is just top top notch. The fight scenes are probably the best I've seen all year. I'll say that probably the best I've seen all year. Like you can, it's just, it's brutal. It is brutal, brutal violence, but it is, it is great to watch. Um, And yeah, I just, I really, really enjoyed this film. Yeah. So like the first thing that I took away after watching this was how historically immersive it was. I honestly Mm. believe that this is the defining piece of Viking media. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that sounded a lot weirder after I said it um but uh yeah no like it, it it just it encapsulates like the the first of all the atmosphere which you talked about robert eggers like directorial style mm. his long holding atmospheric shots that will last like two three minutes even like a still shot with like some kind of like overpowering like sound design or score or some yeah. like big monologue over it are just incredible um i retweeted something earlier today uh and i wholeheartedly agree with it nicole kidman's monologue in this film is better than her entire performance in being the ricardos um nicole kidman is is quite phenomenal like yeah like we talked about the directing but the performances were also very good alexander scarred his ability to yell like a wolf so many times and not look stupid (laughs) is unmatched um but like he really gives a very brooding performance um he doesn't even talk that much but you still you understand everything that he wants like his motive and, and that is like the, the screenplay isn't the most like the, the yes there are a lot of metaphors in in linear storytelling yeah. it isn't the most inventive it's fairly simple it's a pretty simple revenge plot i mean it's just hamlet uh yeah. it, it, it feels like a take on hamlet they do put uh, enough in twist and turns in there though too like, yeah, there's definitely like enough. Not, not be a completely wasted story. But yeah, I, do, I would agree. The storyline is definitely the strongest point. Also, the characters, you know, they do come across as a little cold in this. But I, that's not really a yeah. performance. That is probably just due to the fact that 
that is what these characters are like. They feel so characterized that yeah. you, you, yeah, yeah, you don't want to connect with them, think- therefore you don't really. Right. The, and that isn't what the film is. And, and I still think there are some great performances. I think that Anya Taylor Joy is incredible. She she was, I think, my standout of the film. Um, just personally. I thought that she was very, very good. Um, but yeah, like performances were great. I, I mean, you, you t- we touched a bit on it narratively. I don't think it's the most airtight screenplay. Um, there are definitely a lot of moments with like there are extended vision sequences that I don't think entirely tie together um, or were entirely necessary. Like it did feel a bit no. indulgent from Robert Eggers. Yeah, that is actually a word I had written down. Yeah, but, self-indulgent at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah. And I do think that it was helped a bit by the fact that it was a little tampered down by the studio. Um, yeah, otherwise it probably. could have just felt very, like, way too much. Um, mm. which I wouldn't have minded since I quite like Robert Eggers. I think that he's made three incredible films. Yeah. Um, well, I think that did but, work for me for the film's favor, you know, to not yeah. have, because I thought the Valhalla sequences, whilst beautiful, like they could have been yeah. cut for me. Um, but yeah, like as a personal, I don't mind when, like, if you want to do some surrealist sort of storytelling, but you know, if you go too much into it, that is where you start to lose me. Here, I think it judges it perfectly. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think it works. Let's talk about the cinematography, because, mm. oh, oh my god, oh, yeah, um, I, it gave me major Green Knight vibes just seeing it in the theater, um, yeah. where I was just like blown, like blown away, um, by just like the pure, like, like that, that is cinema. Um, see, mm. seeing that in a theater, um, which I'm glad that you were able to see this in a the theater because I know you weren't able to see the Green Knight um, no, no. in a theater. Um, but like, yeah, it's so good. Like having all of the night sequences be in black, white, and orange, and then like I think we can get in. I, I guess what I mean it, it, it's it's you know it talks about fate and it's kind of detailed from the beginning but there's a, a fight sequence later on in the film that's placed yes. in the volcano where black white and orange are the primary colors uh and the color grading in that sequence and then we see uh allusions to that the entire time and then mm-hmm. like because that's like the personification of alexander skarsgård's character of like hell right and then yeah. in the daytime you have blue and green which is like uh there's an ending sequence with Anya Taylor Joy's character where everything is blue and green around here and like the daylight, the light of their mm-hmm. relationship is personified yeah. as Anya Taylor Joy, whereas like yeah. the dark, the black, white, and orange of the volcano is personified as Alexander Skarsgard. Just some masterful visual storytelling. Um yeah. with the cinematography and the color grading. Like yeah. It's just incredible. Like this I absolutely loved like the naturalistic yeah. element to it. Like yeah, it mm-hmm. wasn't lit by fire. Yes, there were studio lights there and stuff like that, but you felt yeah. like it was. You felt like you were there sitting with, you know, this Viking tribe sitting around a fire. You really yeah. did feel that. And, like, and you, you mentioned, like, it's not exactly a light film. Like, all of the colour grading is still quite dark and still quite, you know, gritty. Yeah. But, yeah, there are those moments of, you know, slight more, you know, more lightness, but still. Um, yeah. It is, on the whole, a fairly gritty story, which is mirrored by the gritty and dark lighting for our most of it. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, I, I too, was felt, I, I felt a bit cold by the film. I think it definitely drags in moments. Um, I think that there is a moment, again, to get into minor spoilers, and we can get into full spoilers in just a second. But, like, there's definitely a moment uh, after his character goes to, a, goes to a place, an encampment, and before he starts doing lots of stuff, in that place um and he's just he, he's like enslaved and he's like just kind of staying there where i think it drags a bit um given the transition from first act to second act um but then from there it's just like it's pedal to the metal like it it, it really yeah. just goes yeah so and i feel yeah. that's that's I, maybe why it didn't completely work for me coming straight out of the theater because yeah. I it did like the story and like all of that kind of thing did not really connect with me. So it's only after that you really are able to sort of step back and really appreciate yeah. all of what's going on, all of what it's you're an experience. It's yeah. an experience. Like yeah. 
Um, all right, I want to make sure that we have time to get into um, some spoilers and some some analysis. Um, so briefly now, do you, do we want to go ahead and give our scores? Because then we can also talk about Oscars briefly as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oscar phases, but what is your score of this film? Uh, so I I just looked back actually on our Batman review. You can check it out if you if you're still wanting Batman content. But I gave that a nine, and I would also give this probably a nine as well. I'd be hesitant to jump it up yeah. more just because there are problems with it. It's not exactly the tightest yeah. film in the world, but the experience I got and like yeah, it's it's memorable. It's great. It's got all the ones I wanted. All of the themes of Eggers are still there. So yeah, I'll give it a nine. Yeah. Yeah, I was initially feeling high eight, but I think I've definitely moved into a low nine just as I've kind of let the experience of the film wash over me. So I think we're both feeling the nine on this. I think similarly to the Batman. I have this at my number five yeah. on the year, um, still behind everything everywhere after Yang, Cha Cha Real Smooth and uh, the Fallout, I believe. Um, but can we just appreciate the rate of a first half of the year we have? Even with just like yeah. this, everything ever all at once, the Batman, um, like... Uh, just uh, after yang um just a great front half of the year like this is one of the yeah. best like we're not even in Tosca season yet so yeah. i know and we already have like we already have plenty of films i'm like yeah this could end up in my top 10 by the end of the year yeah. um so yeah just a great year so far but let, let, let's briefly get into some analysis because as we mentioned so spoilers now um this will be time stamped so if you want to skip ahead to our oscars discussion you absolutely can but um, the, this film, I would say definitely, it washes over you. It's a full experience. When you mm. walk out of the theater, you take a step back. You look at what you've just seen. There's definitely a lot going on. So as I've mentioned yeah. earlier, just with the cinematography, there's some great visual storytelling as far as the darkness and light um, crossing over. It's like Anya Taylor-Joy being like the light part of his care, mm. of Alexander Skarsgård's character, um, which I think uh, works well. Oh, sorry, this isn't a spoiler, but I didn't realize until after the movie that Ethan Hawke was uh, his dad at the start of the movie. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Sorry. I just, but, yeah. Yes, he is. I don't know where that came from. But I was like, I, I looked up the cast. I was like, no shot. That, um, yeah. But, yeah, that's Ethan Hawke. So that's fun. Um, if you, like me, somehow didn't know that, you now know. Um, but yeah, uh, I found the tree of life thing to be very interesting because it initially seemed as if it was the tree of life, but I, it looks like it's the family tree by the end of the film. I don't know if that's, that's right. I presumed it. it was, I presumed it was yeah. sort of, you know, chronicling and his place in sort of his family. And because I mean, he's doing right. it all for his family. That is what the whole film is about. I will say like, yeah. despite the fact the themes are very deep in this, it's probably still one of the most surface level Egger films, uh, Eggers films. Which is a, a weird yeah. thing to say, but uh, there is still a lot to talk about. And yeah, I, I do think that is probably his family tree because I just thought it was symbolizing, you know, he's doing this for family. Because with the father's heart as the roots, like, mm. yeah. I, I think that that makes sense in the children. Um, but then I also do think it is the tree of life and maybe like a tree of fate because um, he talks about like snipping the tree of fate. Uh, so like, that's potentially a thing um choosing between the two different branches like the the kin versus revenge like like i i yeah. think that there's a lot of allegorical stuff going on there with the, the with the tree um what did you think of your character the lady with like the seashells on her eyes um uh, you like she was a, yeah. uh what do you think yeah of her she connection? was an interesting one i presume i have the theory that she's like maybe she's symbolic of his darkness and like the darkness that he will be going into uh if he is to continue on this journey you know she's she's like painted in black or gray or whatever like maybe yes it is the gray to show because mm. i mean all the characters are morally gray there's not exactly a good character in this film yeah um, yeah <laughs> there's <isn't> really <laughs> her no like even i need joy's character is uh is questionable uh even though she is maybe probably the yeah. best of them i'd say maybe the, um the yeah i yeah, presume I that agree. maybe I she'd like yeah this uh the witch or whatever what did you i don't remember her name um but she was representative of his darkness and the darkness that he would be going into if he was to continue on with this path as because like she's giving out the fates and stuff she's predicting the future so this is like not a future version of himself but uh an image of the sort of future yeah. he will end up with 
so I, I went even further and I saw her as like the like physical personification of fate in like the concept of fate. Um, okay, yeah. As like, yeah, she was like the master of fate because like, I don't know, it yeah. almost seemed like fate, fate, like fate and this is like the rules in Alexander Skarsgård's Amleth, I believe is the main character. Yeah, um, I think. Um, Probably. But like, Amleth was able to almost gamify it like he he understood the concepts and the boundaries of fate um and he knew that you know he wouldn't die until the volcano so he was able to use advantage in all of these um scenarios and situations um and like yeah almost turned it into a game because he knew that he could die as we'll take unnecessary risks and i feel like that was like as a benefit from lady fate so yeah, like, I also think that I was know, like the, this. What the yeah, about fate is really yeah, and I also think that gamifying it, like it also plays into his decision at the end, where choosing to go with his um, well, not yeah. wife, but you know, partner with Ronnie Taylor Joy, uh, or go back for Love vengeance, her. and yeah. like, like he had been blessed, I guess, by this fate and this luck that he knew that he couldn't die. He knows in the end there yeah. that he has to pay her back at some point, and this is the moment he had the, that he has to yeah. pay her back. Like he's. Had the, fate, like, yeah. he's had the joy of you know not having to worry about death but now is his time like he's he's gamed the system enough yeah 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 100 percent. that's also also what i was feeling from that um and there's there's so much that we could talk about and analyze about this film um but yeah, for time's yeah. sake would you like to move on to oscar's talk um we can there's anything we can else that you... no all no. right thoughts on this movie's oscar's chances I think they're limited, to be honest. Um, Badly, you know, yeah. will they take, will the Oscars take to it? I doubt it. They didn't take the Green Knight, and that is the best example you could possibly give for this film. It is going to be like this year's Green Knight. I, I think it will be all three. Maybe. Yeah. Um, no, it's you know, not eligible. It, the budget was too much. Oh, is it not? The oh, okay, yeah. The experience, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe Eggers will get some love in some of these directing, smaller directing categories. And like cinematography yeah. and production design, you yeah, know, could be uh, costumes as well. Anything on the technical level, yeah, probably it, it's got a chance. Yeah. I sadly, I doubt performances will do very much, just because there's like, as you said, with Alexander Skarsgård, he's not doing much. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. act like obviously it's a difficult role, but he's like, there's no clips yeah. you can really take out for his acting to. Uh, prove it. Yeah, this is why you it's should. It's more atmospheric be. performance rather than exactly like, uh, a more centered, like focused performance. Yeah, it's yeah. Just creating, I also doubt it's it will creating be... a world. Yeah. Performance. yeah, I also doubt it will do much in terms of the picture category. I just don't know if it's no, no. like yeah. no, exactly. I just too many people has too many problems with it for it to do anything significant yeah. there. Like even in the critics groups, I don't think this will be a best picture. No, I think, and I put it on my list for makeup and hair in our early predictions. I feel less confident about that now. I think if this is getting anything, it's production design, or yeah. maybe it can sneak into cinematography. Like if I this don't know. if I this don't know. gets like ASC support, because I I'm pretty sure the Lighthouse got like ASC and Critics Choice support. Um, if I remember correctly, okay. I might be off base on that. But like, because the lighthouse did get cinematography. Granted, it wasn't three by four it, black and white, but exactly. this is it also had <laughs> right. But this is this is also very stunning. Like this is like the type of cinematography. Like they went from Macbeth. I know again, three by four black and white, but it's the same type of thing. It's a very cinematography centric film. It's very focused on. It shows you look the, look at how beautiful this is, um, and a lot of it does have meaning as well. Like uh like we said like it's a it's a very um dynamic visual storytelling um but i mean so like if you look at last year like the green knight had a lot of visual meaning spencer had a lot of visual meaning like these are not always stuff that the oscars take towards which is a shame but they went you know rally over belfast like they did they they did do nightmare rally over belfast like they didn't just do the bait so Mm. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. I and but that was because I would the be cinematographers brainstormed be onto it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I, 
I think it deserves it. It'll probably be on my list by the end of the year. Probably. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. Are you, are you predicting this in your five? Cause I mean, I don't, we don't even have to talk about 10 for picture. Are you yeah. predicting this in your five right now? Cause we'll do our update predictions in like a month or so, but. Um, no, you have I, will, I, I probably won't be predicting it in anything. I'd have to see the production design because, you know, I'm not, we're not too sure what any of these later films coming up will be like production design wise. Yeah. So that would be the only one I'd consider that I wouldn't put it in cinematography, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Yeah. I also have the nothing. I think I have it number six in production design now. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think it's still there. Um, but it's tough because it does, I think the production design is even more comparable to Nightmare Alley, just as far as like that got in for building the circus set piece. Hmm. This would be getting in for building the village set piece. So yeah, I think that there's a shot. I think that there's a chance. I think that that's its strongest chance, but as of now, I, th- I don't know. It just, it might be too early. It, it might it be. might be too early yeah and, and we need to see how much money it makes as well yeah we need to see how yeah. popular it is financially because i we don't have any numbers on it well, yet i don't believe i i think numbers are i well i know that bad guys did the was that number one for this weekend so it wasn't number one no no so i don't know if it did better than um unbearable weight of massive talent but it might have opened up number three okay so okay which is yeah i mean it's not doing if i still think if any if any if any early year like if any you know uh pre-award season film is going to get in it's going to be everything everywhere all at once that's now a 24's fourth highest grossing of all time it's now made more than every single oscar nominee last year except for dune and west side story um it's crushing at the box office it's still number one of all time on letterboxd it's still, um, once it gets the amount of votes, it will go into the top 20 of all time on IMDb, I believe, with the rating it has right now. It just needs to reach 25,000 votes. Um, so go, hey, hey, go on to IMDb. Give, give, it, a, give it a solid yeah. 10. Um, <laughs> encouraging you, audience. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I think, I, I know. I, I don't even think that this will be Focus's top priority, though. I I I honestly believe it's going to be Armageddon time. Um. Um. So I don't. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, they're sending Armageddon time to fall festivals, so. They are. They are. We'll have to see what. But if that film is considered mixed, uh, or, which there's also Tar from Todd Field. So there's also yeah. that for yeah. focus. They've got I, a like, bit. I They've think... got a bit to juggle with. Yeah. I think both of those are going to be prioritized over the Northman. So, potentially, potentially, I know. Unless people latch onto it, but yeah, yeah, that uh, but I think that rounds out our, our discussion, though. Mm. Yes, um, but I think that rounds out our, our discussion. Any any final thoughts? Uh, go watch it. As I say, support yeah. it in theaters. This is a the theater. theatrical experience. Yeah, we didn't mention it, but yeah, this is definitely one that you should watch in theaters if. Like, if you're going to watch a film this uh, this coming week, you know, from what you said, unbearable way to massive talent, you know, you may enjoy it, but go watch an Orphan instead. Wasn't for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And also, if you don't go and support, like, this or everything everywhere all at once, et cetera, um, you do not get to, like, complain that there's no original movies. Because there mm. are. You just aren't supporting them. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> Go watch this. Go watch everything everywhere. Go like, go watch some good movies. Go watch Men in a couple of weeks because I think that's going to be great. Um, but that is our discussion of the Northmen. Uh, relatively long. Um, I think I think the Batman still holds the holds the our longest yeah. review. Um, yeah. I don't think much will. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think much will take over um, that Batman review. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was a discussion and a half. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is our review of the Northman. We both enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, until next time, Thomas, where can everybody find you? 
Uh, you can find me at Letterbox at Thomas Gladstone, and if you really want to, uh, even though there are no videos up there, uh, there might be in a couple of months. We'll see. Uh, on YouTube at Project Mayhem. Yeah, we need to get you. Uh, we need to get you into film Twitter because that's a very fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Need need to get me there. Um, you can find me, unfortunately, at Twitter, um, where uh, I'm still, <laughs> I, I'm still uh, bashing on Nicole Kidman and being the Ricardos, but praising her for Northman. So there's that. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm also letterboxed at Trevor Matz, and you can see everything that I'm watching. Uh, just watched Honey Boy for the first time. Uh, by Omar wow. Morrell, um, starring uh, Jane and Tatum. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, nice. You can find you can, you can you can find all my thoughts there uh, on movies in general. Uh, on me YouTube at the basement, um, uh, where we talk about things. I just right now, just uh, health issues with uh, with my co-host, but once uh, once Morrell covers, we will be back strong, which will be uh, quite a bit of fun. And then I'm also on the Banana Meter doing things um i think i i think i was the person to rate the unbearable weight of massive talent the lowest out of that group so that was fun wow. um okay. don't get the love like i said review coming soon but all of those things you can find all of us support us if you'd like i don't think either of us care that much like it it's whatever yeah. until next time